What is going on, guys? Are we all doing today? Isaac, thank you for the 69 bits. Whistle, thank you for all the bits. Take it easy, Whistle. Titanium, thank you for the tier one resub. Big ranks for big boys. Hey, you got a pink shy guy now. Hey, what's up, Chi? Pro Blues, thank you for the raid. We just started stream. We're about to do some tier lists. Because that's what we do here. We analyze. <laughs> Yo, Planet. Thank you so much for the tier 1 resub. You also have a pink shy guy now. For your three months. Ken, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Is the music too loud, guys? Or too quiet? Trashman, thank you for the two months. Time to get the big thing on. That's right. And we're going to talk about it in chat. So I am interested in your guys' feedback. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give my insight and then we can kind of talk about it from there, I think. As we go through this. Slow Go better be S tier. Well, thank you for the bits, Callum. I actually don't think Slow Go is on this list, though. It's just the battle badges. Is this ranking from the perspective of someone who has played the game before? So Peekaboo is useless. Yes, that's the way I'm going to be looking at it. Um, I want it to be a tier list for potential. So, Peekaboo, not going to be all that useful since I'm expecting this to be for someone that's really good at the game, right? High meta tier list, there you go. Exactly, Darkness. Or high level meta, yep. Music's perfect? Okay, cool. What's up, Foxy? Double pain S tier. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, hang on. Did I mention both Discords? Because I don't think I told the public Discord I'm going live. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Now it's time to get the big think on. You aren't ranking the no badge point badges or the stat changing ones, are you? Stat changing ones? I'm not sure what you mean by stat changing, but I am not ranking the no badge point ones. Whoa. Scam, thank you for gifting a sub. Thank you for your eight gift subs. To Sniffits Sniffles. That's such a good username, isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you for your gift sub, Scam. Yeah, we listened to the Paper Mario 64 soundtrack during the task, so I figured today we'll listen to the TTYD soundtrack. HP and FP Plus are in this list, yes. I think there is a way to actually rank those. Considering how Pretty Lucky helped you with the egg, I think it needs to be S tier. <laughs> Yo, Bagel, thank you for the tier 1 sub. Hype train. I still don't know what causes that, but it is cool. Yo, Vim, thank you for the tier one resub. Thank you for your three months. When we listen into the Super Paper Mario OST, maybe when I get my hands on a lossless copy, you know how hard that is to find? Yo, Isaac, thank you for all the bits. Oh yeah, I gotta have lossless. Whoa, hold up. Hold up. Sayrul and Tengu, thank you for the bits. And Epic Flames. What is this hype train thing? I don't actually know. <laughs> but it's pretty neat. Isaac, thank you for gifting another sub. 
Zephyr, thank you for the bits. Oh my gosh. Okay, Sayrul, thank you for gifting a sub. And Trashman, thank you for gifting a sub. Really appreciate that, guys. Whoa, this chat is hype, guys. We just completed level one. <laughs> Yep, this is a tier list for Paper Mario 64. Sayrul, thank you for the 300 bits. Yo, what's up, fossil guy? Glad you could be here. Okay, I think we're gonna start off with the F tier. That's the fun way, right? Soap, thank you for gifting a sub to move. And Lucas, thank you for the bits. Participating. And Kong, thank you for the bits. And Callum, thank you for the 25 bits. I know, Soap's got a lot of gift subs. That dude is one generous Soap. Okay, so, I do have a whole thing written up here. I kind of did it, like, on my own, what I thought the tier list would look like, but, again, part of the reason I'm streaming this is I want your guys' feedback. Am I overrating something? Am I underrating something? That's what we can talk about here. G-Man, thank you for the bits. Auto Hammer. <laughs> Not in the base game, but I appreciate the sentiment. Okay, so, what did I rank as the worst badge in the game? What do you guys think? Isaac, thank you for the 38 bits. Peekaboo? I did put Peekaboo pretty low, but it's not the lowest, in my opinion. Um, I put that as second lowest. In terms of how many points I gave Peekaboo out of 10, it ties with last, so I guess it could go either way, yeah. Okay, here's what I had as the single last badge, is this one. You guys know what that badge is? Because it's so underused. And, I mean, there's a reason it's underused. Prince Furret, thank you for the tier 1 sub. Thank you for joining the hype. Yep, so Runaway Pay. This badge, it, um, it's not all that great if you are in the middle of a battle, and you have runaway pay on, if you were to kill an enemy, and it gave you star points, then you run away. You get the star points that you already got from the fight. I don't see much of a use for that, and it's two badge points. That is such a situational benefit for two badge points. Yeah, it's two badge points. I'm pretty sure, I mean, you guys can fact check me on that, but I think it's two. Um, so here's what I put for the pros and cons. The only pro is that it gives Mario the star points he earned so far in a battle if he runs away. That's not much of a pro. <laughs> uh, here's, here's why it's not good. It is actually useless once you're max level. Not that you will be max level for very long in the game, but if you are at level 27, there is zero point to put that on. Um, it's also useless against any enemies that don't give star points anymore, which could happen at any point in the game, really. Um, useless against a group, or unless, unless against a group. So if you're only fighting one enemy, Runaway Pay does nothing anyway. Um, it's just extremely situational, and the few star points you can probably do without. It's probably going to be only two or three, if we're being real. Also, two badge points? Yeah. Why isn't this just, like, a base mechanic anyway? Like, you get the star points that you earned, even if you run. Callum, I actually agree with that. We'll get to that soon. Isaac, thank you for all the bits. Yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Runaway pay? F tier, for sure? That's your favorite badge move? Well, you're probably the only one. <laughs> Shiroko, thank you for the Prime sub. Okay. Now the badge we've all been waiting for. 
Seems like most of us agree with Runaway Pay being pretty bad. It's hardly a badge, yep. G-Man, thank you for the bits. Okay. Next up is... I think this guy. This guy right here. That's Peekaboo. Peekaboo lets you see the enemy health bars. And... You know, that's actually not that bad. Peekaboo is... Really useful, especially if it's your first playthrough. The problem is when it's not your first playthrough. This badge costs three badge points. Three. That is 10% of the max. And Goombario also has Tattle, which unlocks the health bar for that enemy permanently. So you can use Peekaboo or Tattle if you really want to do that. But um, once you know the game, it's not really useful either. Although it does help you with mental math. That's why I think it's a little bit better than Runaway Pay, at least, because Runaway Pay's benefit is just, I never would see it, you know? But at least Peekaboo saves me some trouble if I do math in my head wrong. It seems really expensive for what it is, yeah. I mean, if it was one badge point and it was just like a filler, I would totally just tack on Peekaboo every once in a while, right? Especially for boss fights. It saves you a tattle turn. So yeah, that's my reasoning there. Oh, uh, the peekaboo icon, guys. I think it is supposed to be the silhouette of a Goomba with a heart in the middle of it. If it's not that, I don't know what it is. Yeah, this is for, like, high-level play, Paper Mario. There's no doubt that peekaboo is going to be useful in casual playthroughs, especially if it's, like, your first... But, uh, yeah, when it comes to, you know, higher level play or speed runs or challenge runs, just, no, peekaboo is not good. <clears throat> it's a weird Kirby. Oh, yeah, peekaboo is kind of, kind of does look like a Kirby. Oh, yeah, after this, we got to do a badge icon tier list. So, like, peekaboo would be up here if it was, because, I mean, what even is that? That's S tier, that's what it is. <clears throat> okay, next up. Might surprise people, um, but it also might not. I put this one next. Super Smash Charge. Duke, thank you for the resub. Really appreciate the support. But yeah, have you, has anyone used this badge, like... Has it been useful for anyone before? Because I've never used this badge seriously. Um, yo, Callum, thank you for the bits again. Super Smash Charge. I'm pretty sure it's two badge points, and it's four flower points, and it adds three damage to Mario's next hammer attack if used in the same battle. Now, the reason that this is bad compared to something like Super Jump Charge Damage scales really badly with Hammer, because Hammer does all the damage in one hit, instead of being multi-hit. And it's also... I mean, 3 damage to your Hammer. Your normal Hammer does 6 damage, so why not just do 2 Hammers? And 99% of cases, that's just gonna be what you're gonna do, if you want to use the Hammer. Um, also, it's only gonna be useful on the rare occasion, you can't do anything else, and even then I would say... You should be doing jump charge instead. So, yeah, we if we have time after all the badge stuff, we will rank partners and then chapters, just for fun. But uh, yeah, I, I just think Super Smash Charge is worse than even Smash Charge, because Super Smash Charge takes up more badge points and takes up more flower points. And you do not want to be reliant on a Super Smash Charge strategy. Uh, I have analyzed the partners for in battle, but not the chapters. I'm just kind of, if we have time, we'll do the chapters just kind of for fun. Yep, so um, there's Super Smash Charge. Guess what's after it, or in front of it, I should say. The regular Smash Charge. The reason is I just can't find a really a good use to be charging the hammer. However, Smash Charge is only one badge point and two FP. 
and it adds two damage instead of three damage to Mario's next hammer attack. So, it's probably a more resourceful badge, but still, I don't think you should feel like you have to do that. Oh, I will say this though, um, when it comes to charge moves, you don't have to use it the exact turn after. So if you charge up your hammer, you can wait 10 turns before using your hammer charge up. So there is a very small use there somewhere, I just haven't found it yet. Double the cost for only plus one damage on Super Smash Charge. Yep, and that's the importance of turns for you right there. That's I think why they justified that was you're getting one extra damage, but it saves you turns if you're going to be charging multiple times. But yeah, I just don't think these badges are any good. And that's kind of a common theme with most of the hammer badges. We'll get to that. Oh yeah, so um, speaking of hammer badges that are pretty useless is our next one and it's spin smash whoops yeah spin smash right here so will early game usefulness be factored in uh i think i think it will yeah and that's why these are better than peekaboo because like peekaboo has a use it saves you mental math time these can like the the regular smash charge you get that in chapter one it can be useful for Maybe the Koopa Bros fight, but yeah, other than that, it's it kind of just doesn't get used, especially once you have Quake Hammer. Or Power Smash. Yep, so we got Spin Smash. They're in order within their tiers. Yeah, that's the way I'm looking at this, Chi. So Spin Smash. This tacks on, I think it's only one extra damage to all the backline enemies. It's pretty much like the super hammer attack from TTYD that you get just for having the super hammer. Um, I believe it's one badge point, two flower points. Here's its really cool use. It can knock coins out of Kent C. Koopa and I think the Shy stack. So if you hit Kent C. Koopa's tail with Spin Smash, you get some coins in the battle. Same if you hit with uh, the Shy stack during General Guy. I think. I think the Shy Stack. I know for a fact Can't See Koopa is a thing. Yeah, but it costs badge points and... I mean, when do you need that one extra damage on all enemies? There, why not use Quake Hammer? <laughs> it's just... It's completely... Obsoluted by Quake Hammer. Um, so yeah, it also requires backline enemies to be useful. You're never going to use this on a boss unless it's Fuzzipede and you're doing the glitch. Uh, and it's, I think it's the lowest spread damage in the game. I just don't see a use for that. But Quake Camera can't steal money from Kent C. Koopa, so it's clearly worse. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not even good in T2ID. I agree. I don't really use it much. The Fuzzipede glitch, you can knock him onto the ceiling and still be able to hit him with like your normal jump on the ceiling. Is this tier list going on YouTube? I think so, yeah. If this ends up being a, uh, a good stream, I'll do it. I'll put it on YouTube. Yo, Sayworld, thank you for the stry money. Speedy Spin. Speedy Spin is great, but I'm not going to rank it against these badges because it's not really a battle badge, although it is one of my favorites. Okay, next up. I think someone already mentioned this one being pretty bad. It's a badge called Chill Out. It only costs a couple star pieces to get. And you can get it really early game. Here's the problem though. All it does is prevent enemies from first striking you. It's not a bad benefit by any means, but it's two badge points. And there's another badge that does everything Chill Out can do, but better. The only time I think using Chill Out is useful is if you get caught in the middle of a spin. Like you're jumping out of your spin, or uh, like you're outside of a spin. Reason for that is... Uh, where's the badge? Where's it at? There it is. Dizzy Attack. I don't know where I'm going to put this yet. I have it ranked somewhere. Dizzy Attack? is basically chill out but better. It's the same amount of badge points and when you're spinning you cannot be first struck. 
So, on top of that, though, it dazes the frontline enemy, even if they're immune to dizziness. So dizzy attack is, like, just a better chill out. The only time chill out's useful is if you get caught outside of a spin. So chill out can save you, but uh, I, I don't think it's worth the two badge points. If it were one, I'd bump it up a little bit, maybe here, maybe here. But overall, I don't think it can compare because dizzy attack is... It's also available right at the beginning of chapter one, just like chill out. And it just does everything chill out does better. So yeah. Chill out is one of those badges that sounds really good until you realize that dizzy attack exists. I think group focus is D tier, at least. We'll get to it soon. Okay. So, um... At this point, I have ranked all these badges 1 out of 10. I just don't think you should use these. Unless, of course, you're new to the game. Then chill out could be good, then peekaboo could be good. Otherwise, don't use these. But, uh, even though we are out of the 1 out of 10s, that doesn't mean that the 2 out, two out of 10s are D tier. I think we're still in the F tier. Yo, Metapol, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Okay, so next up is Hammer Throw. So, I like Hammer Throw. I think it's such a cool badge and you just throw it. You just chuck the hammer at the enemies. It's really cool, but... Here's what I had to say about Hammer Throw, okay? A Callum, thank you for the bits. I wish Hammer Throw was good, exactly. It's better in Master Quest, yep. They buffed it in Master Quest. Okay, so here's the thing. Hammer Throw's positives. It can hit any enemy on the screen with a normal hammer attack. That's actually kind of nice, because you can hit ceiling enemies or aerial enemies with your hammer. Um, that's occasionally useful. But, we'll get to why it's not that great. The other thing is that it can hit the Monty Moles in Chapter 6 for 3 extra damage. How cool is that? <laughs> Just like a random thing, only the Monty Moles in Chapter 6 hits them for 3 extra damage. So it does have a use. <laughs> um, it's okay in Chapter 2, I agree. It's alright in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Outside of that, I don't think it's good and here's why. It's way too situational. It's almost never going to be your best option. Like, even in Chapter 1, you have POW blocks. POW blocks hit aerial and, I think, ceiling enemies and ground enemies. So, POW blocks hit everything. And it's better. Um, hammer throws two badge points, guys. Why? Why is Hammer throw two, ba two badge points? It's also two FP. Two badge points for Hammer Throw? Yeah, I actually bumped up the channel point cost of highlighting messages because it was happening so much. Like, it was just hard to keep track of. So yeah, 2 BP, 2 FP is just too steep for Hammer Throw. I know 2 badge points doesn't sound like it's that much, but... When you compare, like, 2 badge points... I mean, for example... Power Quake is two badge points. I, I would put Power Quake, like, up here. It's just, when you compare what you could have on for two badge points instead of Hammer Throw, it starts to become pretty apparent that Hammer Throw is just not worth using. I think Hammer Throw being in, like, the upper part of the F tier is where I would put it. D tier? Why do you guys think Hammer Throw should be D tier? Like, because Quake Hammer does everything Hammer Throw does better and cheaper. Low, low D. I think it's high F. I, okay, well, the good news is we all seem to agree that Hammer Throw is one of the bottom two tiers, yeah. 
Like, I don't see anyone saying hammer throws above average or very strong or anything like that. Like, we at least agree it's D or F tier. So, I'm gonna leave it here for now, and as we start finishing out the F tier and the D tier, then we can talk about if anything needs to be adjusted. I think that would be a good way, because tier lists are comparative, of course, so we gotta see what we're putting hammer throw above or below. Aesthetically, hammer throw is good. Agreed. Hammer throw in terms of use is up here. It's fun. Yep, okay. So, I put hammer throw as a 1.5 out of 10. Alright, here's finishing out the F tier. Is, I think, D down pound. So D down pound is two badge points, again that's too high, uh, and two flower points. And the reason is its only benefit is it, it ignores enemy defense while you're using a normal hammer attack. So it doesn't boost your damage or anything, it just disables the enemy's defense power for that attack. Uh, if it lowered their defense for like a turn or two, that could be a really cool effect, but that's unfortunately not what it does. Um, most enemies can also be jumped on in this game, so it makes stay down jump a more versatile choice. Especially because of how damage scales. Yeah, D down jump is just so much better. Um, it's the best offense you have against Chomp in Chapter 2. I would argue that Quake Hammer is better than D down jump. It's less badge points, pierces defense, and hits everything for the same amount of FP. So... I think D down pound, I, I can't really see a good use for it. It's better in Master Quest when enemies have more defense. Yeah, and because they nerfed D down jump for sure. Not enough enemies have defense. That's really what it comes down to. Like, for sure. If you if you need to like hit a chomp in chapter two hard, you could use D down pound. But I think it's just completely outclassed by the quake badges. You've been cursed. <laughs> yep. Here's here's what I am trying to think about though. D down pound or hammer throw, which one's better? Because now that I think about it, I'm trying to think of when would I use D-Down Pound. You get the badge after Chapter 1. That's what I'm starting to lean towards, like Hammer Throw might be better because D-Down Pound, like... You get it after Chapter 1, but then you get Quake Hammer right after that. You might use it once against the Cleft, and it's two badge points. At that early game, ooh. I am thinking Hammer Throw at least beats D-Down Pound. You guys agree with that? Okay. Yeah, I think I think we can put Hammer Throw at the top of the F tier. I think it at least deserves that spot. Now that I'm looking at, um, you know, like Hammer Throw's got a use. It's got a use. You can you can hit like ceiling enemies in Chapter Two. Um, Quake Hammer is better still, but like. You can also use this for uh, just damaging aerial enemies with your hammer. If you wanted to do that for whatever reason, you could stack it with this amazing badge right here. That's a really interesting move. Does PM64 even have any flying spiked enemies? Uh, Junior Troopa. So you can use Hammer Throw on Junior Troopa in Chapter 5 when you have the Ultra Hammer. So yeah, I'm seeing more uses overall with Hammer Throw. And Chapter 8, that's true. However, you know, you will have other... Other things can hit Junior Troopa too, like Star Storm. You'll have that by then. So, Hammer Throw is okay for very, very, very situational things. It's just too situational and the two badge points kills me. Like... If it were one badge point, and it also gave your hammer like an extra damage or so, I could see it having a lot more use. You also have spike shield by then, yep. 
and spike shield is the same badge point cost. So why is that? Like, why is spike shield the same cost as hammer throw badge point was? I'm not saying that spike shield is good, but I am saying that it makes hammer throw's badge point cost really apparent. <clears throat> okay, next up, we are entering the D tier. And yet another hammer badge is in the low tier. So, this is Mega Smash. I put it as a 2 out of 10. Mega Smash does a lot of damage. Like, no denying that. I think it adds 4 to your hammer. So 4 damage? You know, that's not bad. It hits pretty hard. However, it's 3 badge points and 6 flower points. That's very steep. It's not super sustainable for back-to-back -back fights. Um, single hit attacks just scale poorly with attack stat increases, so you're getting diminishing returns from something like Power Plus when you use a single hit move. Do you want me to explain that, by the way, what I'm talking about there? When I say, like, damage scales poorly with single hits, should I go into that? Okay, so Mario's got, of course, the jump and the hammer attacks. So jumping is a multi-hit. It's basically one plus one is the base damage it does. Yeah, some people wanted me to explain this, so I'm just going to. But uh, yeah, it does, it does one plus one, or two plus two, or three plus three, depending on what rank your boots are. So there's that. When you get hammer upgrades, it adds two to the damage. So your regular hammer does two all at once, your super hammer does four all at once, and the ultra hammer does six all at once. So it's, it's equivalent to your jump. However, when you get a stat increase through something like Power Plus, which increases Mario's jump and hammer damage by one, it increases each multi-hit of jump by one, but the hammer only gets increased by one total. So, instead of 3 plus 3 for your jump, it would be 4 plus 4. So that's a 2 damage bonus. But, if you're using Mario's Hammer, it goes from 6 plus 1 to 7. So, each time you add attack to Mario's badge arsenal, or through turbo charge, or charging, you're getting a lot more out of it with your jump, just because it's multi-hit. And that's why Power Bounce is broken, yep. So... That's why the hammer badges just kind of get overshadowed by anything jump related. Also, there is more enemies in the game that you can hit with jump than you can- or let me, let me rephrase that. There are more enemies in the game that you can hit with only jumping as opposed to only hammering. So hammer overall is just not that good for its intended purpose. There is a great reason to use the hammer coming up at like the higher tiers. We'll talk about that later, but the hammer for its intended use to pierce defense and all that, or be used against enemies with high defense, it's still not the best. Anyway, yeah, so we have Mega Smash. Single hit attacks just scale poorly with attack stat increases. It's too expensive, 3 BP, 6 FP. It can only hit the frontline enemy. That's another issue with hammering that hammer throw actually kind of helps with. But again, hammer throw just... It's not enough bang for your buck. So yeah, hammering can only hit the frontline enemy. Mega Smash is no exception. And uh, hammering, like I said, it's just more limiting than jumping. If D-Down Jump didn't exist, Hammer would be so much better. That's true. If Hammer Throw was better, Hammer would be so much better. Also true. Okay, moving on. Alright, this is this one's not a hammer badge, guys. Yo, Duplis, thank you for the Twitch Prime resub. Runaway Pay is gonna be top tier, right? Uh, unfortunately, it's sitting pretty at the bottom of the list. Okay, so, moving up the list. We have... Lucky Day. Sorry, Lucky Day. I'm sorry to do this, but I think you're a disposable badge. 
so lucky day. Yo, green fishes, thank you for the tier one resub. Okay, so lucky day. It gives you a 20 out of 101 chance for Mario to just avoid an attack. That's we just call it 20 for 20%, 20 but it's actually slightly less than 20%. Uh, it stacks with Close Call and Pretty Lucky, which is a benefit to this badge for sure. You can create sort of an evasion build with pretty with uh, Lucky Day, Pretty Lucky, and Close Call. And Cloud9 if you want to use Lackluster. But it is 7 badge points. That's as expensive as a badge can get. It's 7 badge points, guys. And also... Because it's 7 badge points for only 20% luck, Pretty Lucky and Close Call provide a higher miss chance per badge point. So Pretty Lucky is going to be, uh, it's 3 badge points for 10%. Lucky Day is 7 badge points for 20%. See, that doesn't really scale right. The only other badge in this game that is 7 is Money Money, which we're not really ranking because it's not a battle badge. Strider, you have an email. <laughs> they do stack. So that is one benefit, is that it does stack with Close Call and Pretty Lucky. But seven badge points is so much of an investment that you kind of have to... You kind of have to, like, make your whole build around it, you know? I guess I shouldn't have said ranking every badge, right? Although we can rank, like, the uh, status badges after this in their own list. So yeah, I just said, um, it's too expensive. Pretty lucky in close call are, um, they're, they're just better per badge point. And it's just way too much investment. That's really what it comes down to. Okay, moving on. This one might surprise people, because we just talked about how bad the hammer is. Mega Jump. Mega Jump's got kind of the same issue that Mega Smash has. It's a single hit move, so it, it's not like a multi-hit jump. And it's the same cost, it's 3 badge point and 6 FP. So it's very steep. But the reason I think it's better than Mega Smash is that it's... It's a jump ability, so you can hit more stuff in the game with it. I think for that reason it's better. That's pretty much it. HP and FP plus should be in the F tier. Uh, I don't think they're F tier, but they are bad. Okay, so... Next up, I put Power Smash. Power Smash is one badge point and two FP, which, you know, that's not bad. It's easily affordable. You can put it on any build and it's going to deal a lot of damage in a single hit. It adds two to your, uh, to your hammer damage. However, most enemies can be jumped on. So power jump is just more versatile. It can only hit the frontline enemies still. And that is another reason why it's just so much worse than Power Jump or any other jump badge. And again, single hit attacks just don't scale well. Thought for sure Refund would be F tier. Oh yeah, we're not ranking Refund. Oh wait, why is Refund in here? I'm not going to put that badge in. Refund should not be in here. That's not a battle badge, really. For all intents and purposes, it's not. Yeah, where can we just throw this? How do I get rid of refund? <laughs> it was psych. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. No, we're not putting in speedy spin. I don't know, do you guys think I'm being too unfair to Power Smash? Because I just think Power Jump does everything it does better, and you can get it earlier.
it's not terrible, so I, it's not F tier. And the reason I don't think it is is because one badge point, two FP for two extra damage. It's not bad. But, you know, it's disposable. You can just use power jump instead. No, the charge moves are down here. I think these are the worst. The charge hammers, the hammer charges. Just, no. These are really bad abilities. <laughs> okay. Next up is Happy Heart. Disposable badge, in my opinion. So, Happy Heart is a 50% chance to restore 1 HP once Mario's turn is up. I think it's 50%. I believe it changed in TTYD to 33%, and that's why they made it less costly. But in this bad in this game, Happy Heart is three badge points. So it's not reliable and it's three BP. However, it can be stacked. There is more than one Happy Heart badge. So you can restore two HP per turn if you stack them. It also stacks with HP Drain, which we will talk about much later. Spoilers. But yeah, Happy Heart, it's just... It's inconsistent and it's a lot of badge points. If it were two, I'd be a lot more tempting, tempted to put it up here, but it's three badge points, so... Next up... Oh, another reason that I don't like Happy Heart is if you are using something like... If you're using like a danger build, like Close Call... Then Happy Heart can just kind of screw you out of it. Yeah, it can get you out of peril or out of danger um, when you don't want it. That's the key. Is it kind of ruins a little bit of your versatility if you're gonna if you're gonna use danger badges. Danger badges are pretty good. So you think it should be lower, lower than Power Smash because Happy Heart is at least somewhat unique in its benefits. Power Smash is just overshadowed by a bunch of other stuff. Happy Heart, you know, it's not the best badge or anything, but it's got a use if you want to use it. You can get more heals. If you want to do like a super defensive HP recovery build, you know, you can stick it on there. Unique doesn't mean better, that's for sure. But it can do something that no other badge can't. Or that no other badge can. Yeah, it's unreliable. That's one of the reasons why I think it's a D tier badge. I gave it a 2.5 out of 10, which is the same numerical ranking I gave Power Smash. Very intense music for a very chill stream. <laughs> yep, HP Drain is better. However, HP Drain lowers your attack by one. Happy Heart doesn't do that. So, there might be a reason to not choose HP Drain over Happy Heart if you wanted the recovery. HP Drain is super good. But, it's not what Happy Heart is. Yeah, you can recover like 5 health per turn. We'll, we'll get to that when we get HP Drain. You put it below Lucky Day, huh? I also said on the topic of Happy Heart that defensive badges are just much more effective against multi-hit moves and multiple enemies. Happy Heart doesn't care how many you're fighting, it just... It gives you 1 HP sometimes. Okay, I think I'm willing to put Happy Heart here, compared to Power Smash. But I don't think it's worse than Mega Jump.
Oh, hello, KSS. Oh no, we got a ways to go before the good badges. I would say good is C plus and B minus. That's when we start getting into like average to good territory. Yes, it was KSS. Anyway, moving on. All or nothing is one of the best badges in the game, in my opinion. So we'll get to that. Yo, Light, thank you so much for the bits. Yeah, of course, Light Gazer. I'm, I really appreciate that you appreciate the content. Okay, what is next? Okay, I think next is Spike Shield. So, Spike Shield... Is the audio really crackly? Okay, so Spike Shield, positives, it provides protection when jumping on spiked enemies, and jumping on certain spiked enemies will flip them, so that could be useful. However, as a negative, there are surprisingly few spiked enemies in Paper Mario 64, and there are just too many other options in these scenarios, like special moves, abilities, partners, and items. I'm referring to scenarios when you need to take care of a spiky enemy with spike shield. You, get, you'll have Watts Electro Dash, which practically obsoletes spike shield on its own. Quake Hammer is superior in every way, except that it costs 2 FP. Because Quake Hammer not only pierces defense and flips the enemies, but it hits everything. Spike shield is 2 badge points and it's... I don't know, I just wouldn't use spike shield much. I think it's- I think Spike Shield is pretty much just a better hammer throw. It's good, but there are too many other options, pretty much. I don't know if I'd go as far to say it's good, I would say it's more, like, situationally good. And because of that, there's just too many other options where it's- it's an issue. Like, Spike Shield- the two badge point is an issue. Spike Shield is good if you want to be lazy and jump on things instead of using your other options. Yeah. No, I think Ice Power is above Spike Shield because Ice Power does something a lot more useful than Spike Shield does. And uh, that is coming up soon. Okay. Um, shouldn't be too surprising considering you guys' opinions on Happy Heart, but I think next is Happy Flower. Happy Flower is three badge points which is just too high and it's like happy heart a 50 percent chance to restore one fp instead of hp um the nice thing is this ha actually happens once mario's turn is up so this means that the fp can be used for your partner's turn it can't ruin danger or peril and it can also be stacked so you can sometimes get two fp per turn um but the reason I would say don't use Happy Flower, or why I think it's disposable, Flower Saver is a guaranteed alternative to the, uh, to the two Happy Flowers. So, if you stack both Happy Flowers, you're using six badge points for a 50% chance, or for two independent 50% chances to restore one FP. So you might get two FP sometimes. Flower Saver is six badge points, and it always saves one flower point every time you use a flower point move. So if you're using Mario and his partner's turn, like FP moves for that, it's just a consistent version of that. But yeah, um... No, Flower Saver is 6 in Paper Mario 64. I think it's 4 in TTYD. So T-Smasher... You can stack Happy Flower with Flower Saver. You can get both benefits. It's just a less good Flower Saver is how I would put it. I wouldn't say that Flower Saver replaces it though. Reploid, thank you for the tier 1 resub. You guys are asking really good questions. I, I appreciate it. 
Like, my opinions do need to be challenged on this because I think we get a more accurate tier list if if I know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> If Paper Mario let you have more than 30 badge points like TTOD, would that affect these rankings? Potentially, yeah. Yep. Like, if you had more than 30 badge points possible, then I wouldn't complain as much about, say, Hammer Throw being 2 badge points, or Happy Heart being 3, or Mega Smash, or Mega Smash and Mega Jump being 3. Or even Lucky Day being 7, although Lucky Day being 7 is way too much. If Lucky Day was like 5, I think that would be pretty cool, but unfortunately it's just too expensive. Yeah, why is Hammer Throw 2? Good question. Okay, next up. And this is one I'd be willing to rank lower, but I do want to- I want to stick it at the top of the D tier for now. Feeling fine. Feeling Fine is a 3 out of 10 badge, in my opinion. It's got some use. It protects Mario against status, which is a boost unique to this badge. And it's 3 badge points. 3 badge points is too high, because I think status is just too rare in Paper Mario 64. Like, it'll help you against the Dizzy Koopas, it'll help you against getting poisoned. Outside of that, when are you really getting status, right? I mean, it is a cute icon, right? I, again, if we're doing badge icon tier list, you already know. But we're talking mechanically. So, I don't think feeling fine is all that good. And the reason is because status does not apply if you hit blocks. So, feeling fine is like insurance in a way. If you are worried that you might miss a block, it could be good. If you're really good at the blocks, it doesn't even do anything. It get good, basically, but also I understand why you could put feeling fine on, because it could be helpful. Like, let's be real. Even if you are good, you know, after you get good, you can still miss blocks, especially those dizzy Koopas. So, feeling fine, you know, it can help with consistency. Or just helping you feel less anxious. Situationally useful. But three badge points, that's why I'm worried about this location. If you can just block, don't waste the three badge points, right? Where do we put feeling fine? Lower than spike shield? Oh yeah, it does... Well, wait, does feeling fine even help with sleep? Because... I think in the game description it only says that it protects Mario against dizziness and poison and such, but it might help you with sleep and freeze, but I'm not 100% sure. Even still, there's not very many statuses in the game. All status, huh? Do you guys know if that's for sure true about Paper Mario 64? Because I don't know, sometimes we get things confused with TTYD, and I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Protects against everything. So that is helpful, but just block, right? So I don't know, where do we put feeling fine, guys? Lower than Power Smash, better than Happy Heart, not even better than Happy Heart, like... It's amazing against Crystal King. Like, yeah. Remember, we are looking at this through the lens of veteran players of Paper Mario, so... Someone that won't need to use peekaboo or chill out or, you know, that kind of stuff. Above Happy Heart. Better than Happy Heart, worse than Power Smash. Like, I think feeling, fi feeling fine is useful for the insurance. Like, if you miss a block, that can save your run. But three badge points is a lot to pay for insurance. That seems like a good spot, like mid-D tier. It's got a use, but you don't necessarily need it. It's disposable, right? 
but it's not terrible. Like, feeling fine can make you feel better. Look at that happy face. Okay, next up, we are starting the C tier. Starting off the bottom of the C tier, I would stick this guy. This guy's Fire Shield. So Fire Shield increases Mario's defense by one against fire-based attacks. It also allows Mario to jump on fire enemies, and it stacks with Sushi's water block effects. So you can actually have a pretty good anti-fire defensive build, but here's the problem. Sushi's Water Block already does everything Fire Shield can do, but better. Sushi's Water Block gives you plus one defense and an extra defense against fire attacks. Also, Ice Power grants the same ability to jump on fire enemies too. And fire-based attacks are pretty rare, especially outside of Chapter 5, and it's two badge points, which is kind of a lot. It's good against Final Bowser and anything in Chapter 5, but outside of that, it's disposable. So here's the question. Is it situationally useful enough to be C tier? Or is it overall too useless and should just be disposable? Like, why even pick up the badge kind of thing? I think it's just below average. I would say bottom C tier, C minus. 2BP is a lot for one fire defense and being able to jump on fire enemies. It's basically a better spike shield, I think, because, like, spike shield doesn't give you extra defense against spiky enemies. I think bottom C. I think it's, I think it's good enough compared to spike shield to at least be C tier. Okay. Moving on, we have Shrink Stomp. So Shrink Stomp is a cheap move. It's one badge point and two FP, and it gives you a chance to inflict the Shrink status on an enemy. So Shrink halves the enemy's attack power. And believe it or not, this does work on certain mini boss bosses like Anti-Guy or Blooper. And Shrinking as a status is one of the most easy to apply. I looked at every single enemy's um, shrink chance, and it is one of the better statuses in terms of how easily it applies. However, shrink is the worst status, because it doesn't incapacitate the enemy, it only reduces their attack power. Now the application uh, chance for shrink across all enemies is higher than most other statuses. Like, Shrink Stomp can totally destroy Anti-Guy, for example. Can totally destroy Blooper. A good example of percent working. Um, some enemies are upwards of 90%. Many bosses are more like 50. It really depends on the enemy you're hitting with Shrink Stomp. If you know the chances, Shrink Stomp is so much better than if you don't. Is the reason why you hate it and put it at the bottom of C tier is because you're anti-guy? No, the reason that I think Shrink Stomp is not that good is or why I think it's below average. I think it's Shrink is the weakest status move. It doesn't incapacitate the enemies. It's limited to a single target. And, of course, the chance to not work. So yeah, I think Shrink Stomp is below average. There's too many other ways to status stuff, but it's not bad. You know, like, if you, if you want to shrink an enemy, it could definitely work, and it works on certain mini-bosses fabulously.
Do you guys think it's better than Fire Shield? Okay. So, mostly better than Fire Shield. They're both situational. But, uh, I think shrinking the half attack power, the half, half enemy attack damage, is a lot better than the one defense that Fire Shield gives you for certain attacks. No, Ice Power? We're... Just wait for Ice Power. Okay, next up is... Group Focus. Okay. So, I used to think that this badge was 100% terrible. But there is kind of an exploit with it. So, it allows Mario's partners to use Focus. Eh, that's okay. It can be used to generate infinite star power, though. With Dizzy Attack and running away. You can actually just put on Group Focus. Get into a battle with Dizzy Attack so it incapacitates the first enemy. You can... Make your partner move first, use group focus to recharge half the star power bar, and then run away. Your chances of running away are increased when you have dizzy attack on, and the enemy in front of you is dizzy. So you can just keep doing that over and over and over, and keep getting star power. So group focus, although it is two badge points, which is a negative, it's kind of unfortunate that it's two badge points. Um, I, I still think it's below average because it's got that one big use, right? Soap, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Dark Blaster. Dude, thank you for your 112 gift subs. It does take forever to smasher, but in very small situations, it can save you. Like, if you're nowhere near a Toad House, and you really need star power, you could just put on group focus and grind it up. Although, here's the thing. I do think it's a disposable badge. So, I... Whew, I could put group focus... Anywhere... C minus, D plus, pretty much. I think the infinite star power exploit gives it enough to just be below average. Instead of disposable. But... Yeah... Bottom C, yeah. I actually ranked it the same as Deep Focus and Fire Shield. I gave these all 3.5 out of 10, so you could interchange any of these and I'd be happy. We could put it at the very bottom of C tier. I think we'll just do that. Like, it's got a really good use, much like Fire Shield or even Trink, but, uh,. That use is just not that good. It's too situational. Let me change that up on my dock for all the tiers. Okay. I think that's fine. Yeah, I think C- is just the right spot for it. Like, we were kind of torn on if it were- if it was D+, or C-, minus. so I think bottom of the C tier is fine. Alright, moving on to a slightly better status than Shrink. <clears throat> is... Dizzy Stomp. So yeah, Dizzy Stomp is... Kind of like lower mid C tier. Later, Grim. Thanks for watching. So Dizzy, Dizzy Stomp, is one badge point, two flower points. Pretty cheap. Gives a chance to inflict Dizzy on the enemy. Dizzy is not a bad status. It incapacitates the enemies, and a surprising number of enemies can be affected by it. I think it's the best... Um, 
in terms of application outside of shrink when it comes to the badge statuses. Uh, it is, however, limited to a single target, and the Dizzy status can also be applied by Dizzy Shell, which hits all ground enemies, and it kind of gives bad negative synergy with this badge. Dizzy Dial can alternately be used. And, of course, there's always a chance to not work. And Dizzy, sp uh, dizzy Attack, yeah. So... I would say Dizzy Stomp is better than Shrink just because it totally incapacitates the enemy, but overall it's not as good when it comes to applying the status and when it comes to the fact that you're going to have Dizzy Shell for only 3 FP and it hits everything on the ground and uh, Dizzy Dial and Dizzy Attack, so. I think as far as the statuses go though, Dizzy Stomp's not horrible, it's below average. Thank you for the bits, Dupless. Put Quick Change in B, B tier, I'm gonna riot. <laughs> Where do you think Quick Change belongs? Okay, next up is Ice Power. Ice Power. Now, um,. I know this seems like a weird spot because Fire Shield is there as in the C minus, Spike Shield's in the D tier, and it's not like you need Ice Power that much, right? Well, the reason it's so much better is it provides a better effect. It increases Mario's attack power by two against fire enemies and allows you to jump on them. So it's basically an offensive Fire Shield, but it gives you more benefits. Instead of one defense, you get two attack. Like. That just cripples anything fiery. The embers, the lava piranha. It's just the problem is there's not that many fire enemies. So for what it's worth, you are going to want to pick up ice power probably, but you're not going to keep it on much. It's a below average badge. I think it's mid C. Ice power is two badge points, same as fire shield. And I, I did put here on my notes, uh, there just aren't that many fire enemies in the game to use this against, and two badge points for something so niche hurts my soul. G-Man, thank you for the bits. I don't think it should be a full tier above Fire Shield, but I do think it's better. So it's a couple spots above it. Yeah, there's just too few fire enemies. You're not going to use it after Chapter 5. Well, maybe on the way to Star Haven with the, uh, the Phantom Ember things. That's about it, though. You're not going to use it outside of Chapter 5. <clears throat> Tidal Wave kind of makes it redundant in the sense that Tidal Wave does what Ice Power does. It can cripple Lava Piranha, but isn't Tidal Wave like 8 flower points, whereas this is 2 badge points? You may want to go the 2 badge point route. Yo, what's up, Kevin? Tidal Wave's more than 5. It's 6? Okay. 6 FP versus 2 badge points. I think... That's enough to warrant at least choosing Ice Power over Tidal Wave. It could go either way with that. Also, you would have to Ultra Rank Sushi by that point, which you may not want to do. Okay. Next up is HP Plus. Below average badge. It effectively trades one badge point level for one heart point level. It can be great in the early game, and that means you can prioritize badge point level ups. That is always a good thing. Um, also another thing, if you wanted to do like a 5 HP build using Shea Rippo, you could just tack on HP plus when you really need it, and maintain that 5 HP for as long as you really need. Uh, the problem is, it loses usefulness as the game progresses and you level up more. 
I just don't think it's that good once you have more HP. And HP must be recovered to take advantage of the increased cap, which is kind of annoying. You put this badge on, you have to go heal. So yeah, it just makes it a less versatile on-the-go option. But, you know, you can just swap HP and FP, or HP and BP. Uh, I also put FP plus up because I think FP is more valuable than HP. But again, same issue. I kind of rank these together. Galantro, thank you for the tier 1 resub. Yo, what's up, Keating? I could put ice power above these. Not really sure. I am ranking the badges based on what I've got written on a paper that I was working on, but I am totally open to adjusting these positions based on what we all talk about. Ice power is high, see? I just think that the two attack is like quite useful when you need it, you know? That's a power rush for fire enemies, and you don't even have to be in danger. Yeah, it is still less versatile though, and that's kind of what I was looking at. We're still on the below average badges. Man, we got a lot to do. Okay. Let's talk about this guy right here. So, Sleep Stomp, I think, is better than Dizzy and Shrink. It's a cheap move. Again, 1 badge point, 2 FP. Gives you a chance to inflict sleep on the enemy. Totally incapacitates them. It also um, works very well on certain enemies, like Can't See Koopa. So the thing about Sleep Stomp is it's not as... It's not as common that you you can apply it to the enemy, but I believe it works for more turns, like on Clubbas, for example. Lullaby is one of the issues with Sleep Stomp. Why not just use Lullaby? The only reason you wouldn't is if you're trying to save star power. So yeah, the sleep status can also be applied by Lullaby, which hits all enemies and gives the badge negative synergy. Same with Sleepy Sheep. However, if you just want a flower point status for Mario, this is a good one to do because your partners don't have an ability to sleep. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a little sheep on the shoe. It's a sheep slipper. Or a ram, yeah. Yeah, of course, chance not work. Limited to a single target. That's really what Sleep Stomp can't do. Yo, what's up, Fred? No, I don't think Dizzy should be above Sleep because with Dizzy, you have Dizzy Shell from your partner. And I think the real reason that you would want to use a status badge like Sleepy Stomp or Dizzy Stomp or Shrink Stomp is because you want flower points instead of an item or flower points instead of star power. When it comes to Dizzy, you already have the flower points Dizzy move in the form of Dizzy Shell from Cooper.
Stop is the best status, I believe. The problem is it can only be applied with uh, stopwatch and timeout. So yeah. We got that soothing Boggly Woods music. Oh, it's over. Never mind. Okay. So yeah, that's uh I think that's like a C plus ish. I still have one more badge in the C tier though, and it is this one. Flower Saber, which decreases the, the FP cost of moves by one. This applies to both Mario's abilities and the partners. But moves cannot be lowered to zero FP cost, so one FP is the minimum. And six badge points is extremely steep for this badge like the extra fp is going to be worth spending to free up six badge points i think as far as like saving flower points that's one of the better ways you can go definitely better than um happy flower but it's just not good enough it's six bp if it were four bp it'd be good but it's six yeah they nerf they actually they didn't nerf it they buffed it to four hp 4 BP in TTYD. And this game, it's 6 BP. I think it's a C plus badge. Also, it's 25 star pieces. You can get two, so you can stack them. But uh, it's 25 star pieces for the first one, and the second one you can get in Chapter 6. Both are kind of late. Unless you're, for some reason... Focusing all your star pieces early game into Flower Saver, which you probably shouldn't do. Not situational, strong effect, but expensive. It's an average badge, yeah. Okay. We are now getting to the above average badges, guys. So we're going to have a lot more positive things to say about these rather than, you know, being negative Nancy's about it. Highest FP costing move? I think it's Mega Bomb for 8, yeah, so it would make Mega Bomb 7. No more negativity! That's not true, we still gotta talk about the cons, but we're gonna have more pros to say about some of these. I think the above average but B minus badge is Triple Dip. So, Triple Dip, I gave it a 5 out of 10. I think the three items in one turn is super versatile. Like, it's overkill for one turn. You can use two shooting stars for 12 damage to all enemies and do a recovery item. I mean, there's a reason that we use this in uh, the any percent no wrong warp speedrun against Bowser. We use double shooting star with repel gel. Like, it's so good. The problem is, it's 3 badge points and 6 FP. That's the issue. And the other, well, there's another issue. The other issue is, you can only have 10 items maximum. That really limits your potential to be able to just like, you know, mass use triple dip. You're using almost a third of your entire item arsenal. But like, the amount of damage that you can do in a single turn, imagine a triple shooting star against the anti-guy squad. That's 18 damage to all of them, then you can do like a power bomb. They're already half dead in a turn. You can you can two turn the anti-guy fight like that. But the problem is that it's costly, and you're using so many items that it's kind of like... You don't have any inventory space for it. It's basically just an overkill badge, but too expensive. Kind of the same issue with uh, Flower Saver. I think it's a B minus badge. Twenty item limit would make this a tier. Uh, I think it would help a lot if you had more item limit. All the music is TTYD music. I'm not sure which song was just on. Oh, was it Duplus? I 
I just think triple dip makes certain fights so easy, especially bosses. But it's still only a 5 out of 10 badge. Okay, next up is Multi Bounce. I also gave this one a 5 out of 10. And I said one of the positives, it's very cheap, 1 badge point, 2 FP. You get a super early game and it's good at that point. It hits all the enemies in a row, so it's a great cleanup move. Problem is the damage is just pitiful, especially without boosts to your attack power. It also requires multiple enemies to be useful, and other spread damage options are usually better. But if you need a cheap one, multi-bounce, you know, it's decent. It's good early game. So when I say above average, technically there's no average between B and C. So C is just below and B is just above. I see average as like Sleepy Stomp, Flower Saver, Triple Dip, Multi Bounce, like kind of in between the C plus and the B minus. So yeah, that's just kind of how I'm looking at this. Oh yeah, we got the flurry music. Okay, next up, power down, defense up. So obvious positive, increases Mario's defense by one. Obvious negative, decreases Mario's attack by one. So the reason that this is still a average to above average choice is it's the cheapest modifier to base defense outside of danger. Two badge points for that. However, defense badges like this are just not as versatile as attack increases. So you would want to use this if you are doing a pretty high defense build, or if you're doing like a danger last stand tanky build. We'll talk about that later. It's average to above average. I think it's definitely the weaker of the P down D up, P up D down badges. Best defense in Paper Mario is a good offense. I agree. That's why I don't think this deserves to be any higher. It comes later in the damage calculation. I don't know if that's true for 64. It might be T2ID. I think that's what JD Aster told me. Yo Mystic, thank you for the bits. Okay, next up is Jump Charge. Soap, thank you for gifting a sub to Super G Man. Really appreciate the support, Soap. So jump charge, increases Mario's jump attack power by 2 for the next jump attack. It's capable of insane damage potential combined with power bounce guys. Like, just charge up a bunch and then you will be doing cumulative damage with power bounce. It's so good. And 1 badge point, 1 FP, super cheap. One, Yeah, 1 BP, 1 FP. I don't even think there's anything else that cheap. It's really nice. And um, as for the negatives, it takes a turn of setup or more. And the two damage charge, it's just not that amazing. It's only two damage per turn. Fifth Abyss, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I said Jump Charge is overshadowed by S Jump Charge because Mario's turns are more valuable than FP. However, there will be situations where you need to conserve FP, where this could be just as good, if not better. 
And uh, yeah, so S jump charge is overall better. Yo, Fred. Dude, thank you so much for dropping 5,000 bits, man. Thank you so much, Fred. Are we gonna put that towards killing the yellow Yoshi? I'm kidding, of course, but... I do appreciate your support a lot, Fred. <laughs> what do you guys think so far of B tier? Like, these are above average badges, but not necessarily indispensable. Okay, so far so good. Next up is this guy, the first badge you get. <laughs> Sorvet, it's kind of funny you say that because I have done a Did You Know Gaming video on Paper Mario. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Okay, so, power jump, guys. Power jump adds two damage to Mario's jump combo and base damage. So, if you do two plus two damage, it'll add two to that product and you get six. So it's based on your uh, boots. Two FP, one badge point, nice and cheap. It gives Mario's jump the same benefits as hammering because you have a single strong hit option. Um, but it is overshadowed by D-Down Jump when enemies have high defense. And, like any single hit move, it just scales negatively with higher attack, just like the hammer. But overall, it's just a better power smash, and you get it even earlier. So, why not use it? It could be good to the end of the game, too. Yeah, that's a good first badge. Yo, what's up, Son of Liberty? G-Man, thank you for the host. Make the icon for the highest tier subscriber badge, the badge that you rank as best S tier. <laughs> you know, I was thinking of maybe doing like bit badges. We'll do actual Paper Mario badge icons or something like that. Could be fun. Dainty. Dainty, no. <laughs> Okay, moving on. I think right around here is where I would stick... Oops. Dizzy Attack. Dizzy Attack, like we've talked about a little bit, dazes the frontline enemy with the first strike. And enemies that are normally resistant to dizziness are still affected by this. Like, it's not super easy to, say, daze an Amazy Daisy, but it works every time with Dizzy Attack. It also improves your chances of running away from a fight, so you can dizzy attack into a, into a battle, scout the enemy formation, then leave, adjust your setup as you need, come back in, take them all out. It also makes Mario immune to enemy first strikes while spinning, which is why it's so much better than Chill Out. It does everything Chill Out does, but better. Here's the drawbacks of Dizzy Attack, though. It's useless against against scripted battles because you got a first strike. That's the anything, or that's the other thing, is it replaces your first strike damage. So if you want to daze the frontline enemy, you aren't going to be able to tack on extra damage with jumping or hammering outside of the fight. You're basically giving yourself the option to status first strike instead of damage first strike. I think B tier, above average, Mid to high B tier is a good spot for Dizzy Attack. 
No use for bosses or for scripted story battles, but yeah. For any other enemy, it's pretty good. Yeah, plus this only costs two badge points. Same as Chill Out. <laughs> That's why Chill Out is so low. Okay. Next up is a badge I really like to use. Zap Tap. I gave Zap Tap a 6 out of 10. You get immunity to most enemies that latch onto Mario, like fuzzies. It also does one extra damage against physical attackers, so that's pretty neat. Anything that touches Mario when they attack, it does one damage to them. It also cuts many multi-hit moves short, like Super Blooper's Charge or the Master 3. It's pretty good. The problem is I still think it's a little too situational to justify leaving it with a costly 4 badge points. So yeah, the 4 badge point is really its only negative. It's pretty good, but it's not amazing, right? This is a B plus. I think it's a B plus badge. Well, it's not always one damage per enemy per turn. It depends on how they attack you. So if it's like a Magikoopa that's shooting at you, doesn't do anything for them. Um, situational defense. It's a pretty strong badge, but I wouldn't say it is quite A tier. It's a B plus badge. It's just too expensive. Alright, next up is something that is not situational. Defend plus. So defend plus gives Mario one base defense, no questions asked. It's great against enemies with multi-hit moves. And it stacks with other defensive badges. Problem with Defend Plus is the diminishing returns when enemies deal lots of damage in the late game. Just because it's one damage, you know, one base defense. And six badge points is pretty costly. You can equip two damage dodges for the price of one of these. So I think Defend Plus is pretty much... It's a great defense badge. Yeah, exactly. It, it totally ruins one of the Bazaps moves, for example. Anything that only does one damage but a bunch of times, or low damage a bunch of times, Defend Plus is so good. But it's six badge points, and that's the real issue. I think it's a B plus badge. You think it's inferior to Zap Tap? Because when it comes to both Defend Plus and Zap Tap, you have to get hit for it to do anything. Well, I'm thinking of certain abilities like we, we already talked about the Bazaps. It makes one of their moves do zero damage. Yo, Soap, thank you for gifting a sub to Glower. Really appreciate that, Soap. Um, so yeah, like it, it makes the Bazaps, one of their moves, do zero damage. It makes Huff and Puffs tough puffs. Not that good. They only do one damage per click instead of two. Um, when it comes to like Jungle Fuzzies, they only do one instead of two. <coughs> Crystal Bits. All three of those hits are one less. Like, I think Defend Plus, and also every single enemy that attacks you is just going to be doing one less damage. It's It gets used a lot more than Zap Tap does. But, it's six badge points. I think Defend Plus is too versatile to put lower, guys.
What do you guys think we should put to Finn Plus if it were five badge points or even four? Like, how would that affect this for you? Do you think you'd put it up here if it were four or five? Or A tier, A plus? I think it's a B plus and it, the main reason is just that six badge point cost. So this isn't even the top of B, but it's, I would say, B-plus-ish. 86%. If we're going by, like, school grades or something. <laughs> Alright, next up. Next up is I put Mega Quake. We're not going to do refund. Refund shouldn't actually be in this list. I didn't mean to put it there. Okay, so Mega Quake is a spread damage move. It pierces defense. It flips shell enemies. And it hits ground and ceiling enemies alike. Those are some really good strengths to an ability. However, it is 7 FP, 3 badge points. It's three more FP and one more BP for plus two damage compared to Power Quake. And that's why I'm not putting this one high or higher. It's because you don't even need that plus two damage. That's not the only way to kill Clefts. Also, you won't have Mega Quake at that point. There are three Quake badges. Mega Quake is the lowest tier one in my opinion. Um, it's also useless against aerial enemies, and the damage does not scale with your hammer upgrade, which is kind of neat. So, it's always going to do 6 base damage, no matter what hammer upgrade you have. Uh, but you're only going to have the ultra hammer normally when you're using Mega Quake. Okay, this one is... End of the C tier. I think Dodge Master is the best B tier badge. So Dodge Master. Greatly increases the window for timing Mario's action commands, improving consistency, which impacts both attacks and blocks. And I know what people are thinking. Get good. You don't need that. There's another very, very important benefit that Dodge Master does, and it doesn't even tell you it does it. Dodge Master increases the damage potential of Power Bounce by directly reducing the Power Bounce cap percentage. So it basically gives every single Power Bounce you do at least one more bounce for free. I think I mentioned it on a video, yeah, on the um, how to beat Bowser in one turn thing. The fact that it makes one of the best badges in the game even better is a reason to use Dodge Master. And, let's be 100%, same reason we justified having feeling fine in the D tier instead of the F tier, it improves your consistency. You know, every veteran player in Paper Mario is going to miss a block or an action command one time. You know, Dodge Master might save you. So, it, it, you know, there's good reason to use it, even if it didn't use, didn't do the power bounce cap thing, but the reason it's up here is because of power bounce. I don't think it's A tier because it's still two badge points. And the better you are at timing hits, the less useful the badge's primary effects are. If it didn't buff power bounce, I would say it's either below average or disposable. I would say that's at least A tier upgrade, the fact that it helps power bounce. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped over a badge. Like, way, way back. <laughs> okay. In between Mega Jump and Power Smash. 
is this badge. Pretty lucky. I was sitting here like, why is Pretty Lucky still here and we're done with the B tier? No, Pretty Lucky is not that good. It's a 10 out of 101 chance for Mario to avoid getting hit. It stacks with Close Call and Lucky Day, which are both good. But three badge points, it's getting into expensive territory. A 10% chance is almost unnoticeable. I mean, if you think about it, it's only going to kick in once every 10 attacks or so. And Close Call provides a much higher missed chance per badge point, and the benefits are just inconsistent. I know, hashtag egg, but Pretty Lucky is still not that good. It's better than Lucky Day, though. I'd even be willing to put it above Mega Jump. Actually, yeah, that's where I had it. Yeah, I said between Power Smash and Mega Jump, but that's before we moved Power Smash up a couple. So, I think Pretty Lucky should be here. Okay, back to the A tier, which I suppose we're just now starting. Okay, you guys ready for the really good badges? Okay, I think next is S Jump Charge. S Jump Charge increases Mario's jump attack power by three for the next jump attack, which of course is capable of tons of damage once you have power bounce. If you combine S jump charge and power bounce, you can one shot anything in the game. You just need to charge up enough. And because it one shots stuff, you can skip most phases during bosses. So like Crystal King has a couple phases, one of them he starts healing and making clones. No, just S jump charge a bunch and then power bounce, and he's dead. All he does is the crystal bit thing. It's so good. The problem is, once you have S jump charge and power bounce, that's kind of your only strategy. And 4 FP is somewhat steep to be charging up each turn. 2 BP, you know, it's not 1, but 2 BP is probably fair for this. Uh, and you are wasting turns as you are setting this up. So yeah, it's just, S Jump Charge is a very strong badge, but it's just not versatile. The true power of S Jump Charge is only realized if you have Power Bounce, so you need Power Bounce to make it count. <clears throat> I still think it's not versatile enough to be overpowered, because... Yeah, think of S Jump Charge as plus three per bounce. Charge once and you get a five cap and it's 15 damage for two turns. That's why it's so good. Power Bounce is just way too broken. But see, here's the thing. This is where I'm coming to the conclusion that this is not S tier. It's not S Jump Charge that's broken. It's Power Bounce that's broken. S Jump Charge on its own is not that good. You need Power Bounce to make it good. So... The other thing is, it's just outside of that strategy, it's not that good. Yeah, if Power Bounce didn't exist, this would not be a very good badge. And the way I'm looking at it is Overpowered tier, the S tier, are badges that are going to be good pretty much in any situation. Or, if they're not, they're extremely overpowered for the situations where you will be using them. Alright, next up, D-Down Jump. This just ignores all defense with Mario's jump. And it's a multi-hit jump attack still, unlike most jump abilities like Mega Jump or Power Jump. D-Down Jump still lets you do both hits. And damage scales better with multi-hit jumps, so it's just a strong option throughout the game. D-Down Jump is really good against like Final Bowser, or Crystal King, pretty much anything with defense. Oh, 
Okay. Next up is an extremely cheap and versatile badge. Double Dip. Double Dip gives you two items in one turn when you use it. It's surprisingly versatile. I mean, you can attack twice all enemies. You can heal and attack. You can status and heal. I mean, you have a bunch of little options with Double Dip, and it's really nice. And it's only 3, three FP, 1 BP. It's agreeable for the FP cost, and it's a great filler badge for any build. So, and uh, of course, we still have the issue of only 10 max item slots, although that's not nearly as limiting as Triple Dip when you're using 3 a turn versus 2 a turn. And the other issue with Double Dip is that you're attacking items. Even with Double Dip, when you're using 2 in a turn, they're often inferior to Mario's other options. So, I would say for versatility, Double Dip is a very strong badge. But uh, you probably shouldn't be using it for all-out offense and stuff like that. It's really good. 1 BP, 3 FP, yeah. This is a tier list for... I would say... I wouldn't say it's for, like, casual play, because I'm saying things like Peekaboo is garbage and... Pretty Lucky's not good, or, you know, those are totally fine badges if you want to use them. But we're talking at, like, the pro level, challenge running, speed running, high level play. High level play tier list. Okay. Next up is the original Quake Hammer. Notice Mega Quake is B tier, this one is A tier. Reason for that. Quake Hammer does all the... The only thing that's different between Quake Hammer and Mega Quake is how much, you're how much you're paying to equip it and use it and how much damage it's doing. It still is a spread damage move that pierces defense, hits ground and ceiling enemies, and flips shell enemies. All those effects still apply to the original Quake Hammer and it's only one badge point, two FP. That is so good for this badge. Uh, they are, I mean, it's still useless against aerial enemies, and damage doesn't scale with hammer upgrades still. But uh, you know what? That two damage, two spread damage, you're not using it for the damage. You're using it to flip enemies, or pierce their defense, or knock ceiling enemies down, or just to hit everything for a little bit. And for that cost, two FP, one BP. You should be using Quake Hammer, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's just good utility. That's what Hammer should be used for, is utility. Like... You know, we talk about how bad Hammer is for its intended purpose, like D-Down Pound or Power Smash. No, Hammer is good for the utility of Quakes. That's why you want to use Hammer. Okay, next up is Close Call. Close Call gives enemies a 30 out of 101 mischance when Mario is at 5 health or less. So 30% mischance for how many BP? One badge point. That's why it's so much better than Pretty Lucky and Lucky Day. Close Call can clutch save you. And that's, I think, part of the fun. But of course, it stacks with the other Lucky Badges if you wanted to do that. Um... The only downside to close call is you have to be in danger to see it work. So if you have 6, six HP, close call will never activate. But if you have 5, there's a 30% chance of enemies missing. It's a pretty good last resort badge. Yeah, 30% for one badge point is good enough for me. In TAS, it is the best badge. It just makes you invincible, yep. You can just manipulate RNG so that you never die. Um, I don't know what it is in T2ID, but it is 30 out of 101, so like 29 point something percent. But we just round up to 30. When we're talking about it. Okay, next up is Quick Change. Quick Change 
prevents switching partners from using up a turn. So you can use Mario's turn to switch to Cooper, and it won't take up Mario's turn. This is such a huge versatility thing that I feel like it should be part of the battle system anyway. It just, it can come in handy when you least expect it. Uh, the issue is proper planning can make this a little less useful than it might seem, and four badge points. Although four badge points, you can argue, is worth it for this. I just think it's a very strong badge, but it's not overpowered. It's seven badge points in T2 ID. Yeah, it's pretty expensive in that game. But also, your partners are more versatile in T2 ID. So I think that was part of the reasoning. Okay. We're at the A plus badges. Yeah, I have the T2 ID soundtrack on. <laughs> Next up. Power plus. This is just a straight up damage increase, no exceptions. And offense is the best defense, so that's why it's higher than defend plus. There's also two power pluses, so you can stack them. And the six power, the issue is the six badge points. It makes it one of the most expensive badges, badges in the game, but if there are any badges worth six badge points, it's probably power plus. Like, you just need the attack power, it's really good. Okay, and here's the last badge I have for the A tier. Power Rush. Power Rush increases Mario's attack power by two when in danger for one badge point. So it's double the effect of Power Plus for five less BP, but you have to be at five HP or less to use it. And the other issue is it does not stack with Mega Rush. So, if you have both badges on and you're in peril, the damage bonus goes unnoticed. But yeah, uh, the other reason that it's not overpowered in my opinion is it is limited to Danger Mario, and Peril is just arguably a better all-out offense build in Paper Mario 64. Linsky, thank you for the 10 bits. Yeah, it stacks in T2ID, I think, but not in this game. Okay, you guys ready for the overpowered tier? Or wait, what? what is Deep Focus doing here? Did I miss this one too? Deep Focus, where you at? Okay, I put Deep Focus here, and I said Deep Focus is a below average badge because it improves the amor amount that Mario can char charge Focus in a single turn. Not by much though. Focus is usually not worth Mario's turn. It needs to be stacked for more badge points to make it worthwhile, because it's only one badge point, but there's three of them in the game. And uh, another thing that's kind of weird, it doesn't apply to Group Focus. So you equip Deep Focus and Group Focus. And Mario can charge up star power really good, but your partners can't. They do not have the deep focus, so... Whatever. I just think it's... It's okay for what you need, but it's not that good. You'd put it in D tier? I Honestly, I'd, I could see it being in D tier. Top of D. Yeah, that's where I'm gonna put it. We'll do that. Untuned, thank you for the primary sub. And G-Man, thank you for the bits. Really appreciate it, guys. Okay, did you guys see these badges 
coming when it comes to the overpowered. Like, the ones that we still have, except for refund, that's not supposed to be here. But yeah, like, when it comes to these badges, were you expecting them or no? Okay. Coda, thank you for the Prime Resub. Thanks so much. Starting off the S tier is Power Quake. The 4 base damage is just such a solid base damage for this kind of thing because it is modified by attack increasing badges. Not your hammer upgrade, but your attack increasing badges. So if you have like the Mega Rush, P up, D down, double power plus, all or nothing, you can get 12 damage with Power Quake or 14 with Mega Quake. Here's the thing. I'm pretty sure Duplighosts are the only enemies with more than 12 health. So Power Quake can one-shot everything outside of Duplighosts. Every normal enemy that can be hit by it. It one-shots all of them. And it's only 4 FP, 2 BP, instead of 3 BP, 7 FP. I just think that it is the perfect balance between the quakes. You get the utility and you get the damage. It hits that 12 HP mark, which you need for chapter 7 and chapter 8. It's just, it's better overall than Mega Quake and Quake Hammer. Well, here's what's interesting is you may not want to equip every S tier badge because some of them don't have amazing synergy together, but you should probably have at least some of these on. Okay, next up is P up, D down. This increases Mario's attack by one, but decreases Mario's defense by one. I think most of us can agree that attacking is more important than defense because Mario always moves first. And because offense is the best defense. Just kill them. Just, just beat them up first. Don't let them attack you. But yeah, the real reason that this is so high is the two badge point cost. You're not going to get another cheaper way to improve Mario's attack outside of danger. Yeah, just win. Easy peasy. Uh, it's just amazing. PFD down, amazing for all out offense builds. Of course, it has negative synergy with defensive builds, so you don't want to, like, put it on with P down, D up. That would be pretty dumb. But, uh, yeah, it's otherwise really good. Okay. Next is Mega Rush. Mega Rush increases Mario's attack power by four for one badge point if you are at one health. So, combined with things like bows out of sight, repel gel, life shrooms, you can become kind of an unstoppable force while in peril. Yeah, you have to be in peril, but if you are a high-level player of Paper Mario, you will know when or how to just get to 1 HP, and you can just start killing everything. The sad music is for the victims of Mega Rush. Okay, so yeah, just incredible damage output, especially if you combine it with Power Bounce or Power Quake or anything like that. One badge point, extremely affordable. Peril can be easily managed with Repel Gels, Out of Sight, Life Shrooms. Um, the issues with Mega Rush, the reason why it's not the best badge in the game, is it has negative synergy with defensive, HP restoring, and HP boosting badges. It limits Mario's other strategies in favor of all-out offense, and all benefits are, of course, lost if you are not in Peril. 
Snorkeling, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Yeah, the Victims of Mega Rush theme. That's what this is. Okay, now that the song is over, we can move on to the next badge. Which is All or Nothing. All or Nothing is better power plus if you're good at the action command. So All or Nothing increases Mario's attack power by one for four badge points instead of for six. Six being power plus, of course, so it's much more resourceful. Four BP is just the perfect amount for this badge. Um, it has positive synergy with almost any build. You just put this on and you just have one more attack, four badge points. It's just... You should always use all or nothing if you have it, pretty much. The only reason you wouldn't is if you want to do less damage. Or, the other reason, of course, being it sets Mario's attack power to zero if you miss the action command. So if you miss it, you're doing no damage instead of plus one damage. So don't use this unless you're pretty used to the timings. But if you're used to the timings, this is such an amazing badge. Uh, Callum, I... I explain it in the VOD, but the short answer is pretty much that Power Quake is the better balance between utility, cost, and damage. Okay. So, I ranked All or Nothing a 9.5 out of 10. HP Drain is also a 9.5 out of 10, in my opinion. So, HP Drain. Uh, I don't think this badge gets nearly enough use in Paper Mario 64. They totally destroyed it for TTYD, and I think that's why people don't know about how good it is in 64. But uh, it can heal up to 5 health per turn. The amount healed is determined by the number of hits you do. So if you do a multi-hit jump, that's 2 HP restored. If you hit 4 enemies with Power Quake, it's 4 HP restored. If you do 5 Power Bounce capped, or if you do a 5 Power Bounce, you get all 5 HP back. However, if you do like a 7 Power Bounce, you still only get 5. It caps out at 5 HP restored. So, the healing also takes place before enemies attack. So it takes place during or after, like right after Mario's turn. The issue with HP Drain is to balance it, they made it 3 badge point costs. It also decreases Mario's attack power by 1. So you might want to use HP Drain with all or nothing. It's also less useful in certain situations, such as hammering, which only heals 1 HP. And it has negative synergy with danger badges, unless you set your max HP to 5 with Shea Rippo. Um, it's just the amount healed that makes this so overpowered. Like 5 per turn. 5 HP per turn. Imagine if you have defense badges. There's not a whole lot that's going to be doing that much to you. You're going to be healing as you take damage. Okay, the first 10 out of 10 badge, in my opinion. Doesn't matter if you do damage, uh, you need to do damage with Mario, so... Like, if you use Shooting Star, if you use Star Storm, it does not heal you. You have to use, like, Power Bounce or Power Quake. But that's okay, because you probably should be using those most often. Okay, first 10 out of 10 badge is Last Stand. Last Stand is kind of amazing. It is one badge point, and it halves the damage that Mario takes while in danger. So that, on its own, doesn't sound that good. Like, if you get hit with a 10, 10 damage move, it's going to go down to 5 and you still die because you're in danger. But here's the thing, this damage calculation effectively takes place before blocking and damage dodges apply. So if you have two damage dodges on and you block a 10 damage move while last stand is up, 
it halves the 10 damage move first, then adds your block, then adds the damage dodges, and you only take 2 damage. They changed how this was calculated for TT Eddie because it's way too overpowered, but uh, you can survive a Star Shield boosted Bowser Fire with all the defense badges in Last Stand. So a 20 damage move can be lived while in danger with Last Stand. Uh, in TTYD, they made HP Drain only heal, I think, 1 HP per turn. So yeah, it's just not good. Yeah, you can, you can make Mario into a tank with danger. So, it's funny, the best way to tank damage in Paper Mario and have a defensive build is to be at 5 HP and have Last Stand on. <laughs> you can survive pretty much anything in the game. A glass tank, pretty much. It's kind of strange, but that's how Last Stand is. The, the main issue with Last Stand is you have to be in danger to make use of it. So at 5 HP, it's great. At 6 HP, it does nothing and you're probably going to die. Alright, next up is Damage Dodge. Damage Dodge increases Mario's defense by one when you block. And it's only three badge points instead of six like Defend Plus. So not only is it half the cost, you can stack it with another Damage Dodge. And it makes it so blocking reduces your damage by three instead of one if you have both on. It has positive synergy with almost any build. Last Stand. All out offense builds. You can still put on Dodge Master, or yeah, Dodge Master, and no, not Dodge Master, Damage Dodge. You can still put on Damage Dodge, and it really helps you with mitigating damage. It's cheaper and better than Defend Plus. Just hit your blocks. That's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, Dodge Master does make it easier for you to block, so that's maybe another reason why Dodge Master is above average. You can be more consistent with your blocks, and just have damage dodge on, you won't take a whole lot of damage. I mean, the the only real drawback I can think of for this badge, other than of course that missing doesn't help you with defense, missing your block, uh, is that you have to get hit to take advantage of the effects. All right. The number one badge in the game is Refund. So Refund gives you 75% of the money uh, that an item sells for if you use it in battle. And it's only one badge point. One badge point. Yeah, it's 75%. That's actually pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, in all seriousness, I didn't mean to put Refund here. Um, number one is Power Bounce, okay? Thank you for the refund bits, Meep. Okay, so number one is Power Bounce. It is only two badge points to equip Power Bounce. It gets obtained early in the game. Dodge Master increases the effectiveness of this badge. Damage scales cumulatively with attack power, or with higher attack power. And it can one-shot most enemies in the game for 3 FP. The only downsides to Power Bounce is it requires other badges with synergy to maximize its potential, like maybe Mega Rush or Power Pluses, All or Nothing, S Jump Charge, and it is single target. Those are the only drawbacks of Power Bounce, but who cares, it kills every boss. Like, just S Jump Charge, Power Bounce, you win. It is game defining, like, so for those of you that aren't super familiar with how Power Bounce works, it gives your multi-hit jump, you know, jump does 1 plus 1, or 2 plus 2, or 3 plus 3. It lets you keep going. And the way that they, I guess, balanced it, but didn't really balance it, is they made it subtract 1 damage each time you jump. So, if you start at 5 damage, it goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, instead of 5 plus 5. But if you start at 10 damage, it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1 until you miss or until you get capped. And Dodge Master makes it so you don't get capped as much. 
So, Power Bounce, Dodge Master, Mega Rush, S Jump Charge, All or Nothing. Like, these are all just... It's all about killing everything in one shot. And you can pretty much do that with the very the A tier and S tier badges. Um, it's really good. What do you guys think of this tier list? Yay or nay? Any obvious misplacements or overall pretty agreeable? Put refund in S tier? Hmm. I don't know. Refund not first? Okay. Alright. I think I'm pretty happy with this. This is a pretty good list, I think. I am going to go use the restroom real quick. And what do you say after that we'll talk about the partners? You want to do that? Okay, well, I will be right back. Enjoy the T2ID music. Hello. Zipline, Kirby Chu, and Mystic. Thank you all for the bits. Refund was too powerful. That's right. We can't put it on this list. Refund is way above all of these. Oh, shoot. No! Get out of the terrible tier. I'm sorry, Refund. I don't know how to put you back. Refund, no. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to get rid of this tier list because it's broken now. Let's talk about this one. Alright, I have a question. Can anyone verify for me how much FP Sushi's Tidal Wave is? Because I don't remember off the top of my head, but it does matter. Six. I think it's six or eight. But no one is saying eight, everyone's saying six. That's good enough for me. According to the wiki six, alright. Okay, so we need to define how we're ranking this tier list first. The first thing I'm gonna say is I'm not ranking these off of personal preference because even though Bo is the best, 
I don't want anyone to feel like I'm only putting her in S tier because I like her. I, th I actually think Bo is one of the best in the game, so, you know, we'll get to that, but um, we're not talking about the design or the personality, we're talking about how good they are as far as combat potential goes. Battle viability. But here's the other thing we need to figure out. What are we doing here? Are we talking about the best in terms of actual use for most players or for top players or for TAS? Because I think those are three different tier lists. How well they crashed the game. <laughs> Well, DPS and Utility are going to be factors in ranking them. I think we'll just do high-level play. So, not necessarily TAS, but high-level, right? Goompa is not viable in most fights, so... Whoever made this tier list also known as I'm Glower. He's been in this chat. This guy who made the tier list didn't include Goompa, but um, yeah, one of my mons. Hmm. Hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah, alright, so no Goompa option, which, that's fair, to be honest. He, he doesn't really rank in with these, kind of like Refund. Alright, let's start with the worst partner, okay? Who's the worst partner, guys? In terms of battle potential. Oh, I think he can, Glower, but I'm just, I'm messing around. I don't think he should be on this list or people are going to get confused. <laughs> I think the worst in the game is this guy. This is Jonathan, aka Lack of Lester. Here's what I have to say about him. So, his positives are Spiny Toss can hit anything on the, on the screen. So his base move is pretty versatile. And Spiny Surge is basically just a better power shell because it can hit anything. But, man, man, Lackluster, that's all you really have going for you. Like, Hurricane is useless once you get up and away, which is after Chapter 7. And realistically, you probably won't need to use Hurricane before then or after. So, you guys know what Hurricane does? It just blows the enemies away. And it's got a slightly higher chance than, like, Spook. It does. Thank you for the bits. So, yeah, Cloud 9 is a decent utility move. But in my opinion... I think out of sight just eclipses it entirely because Cloud 9 gives you a 50% evasion chance, better than any of the lucky badges. But you're paying FP for it, and it's only for a couple turns. I think you should just use bows out of sight to have a 100% evasion chance when you need it. No, I don't think there's, like, a D tier, because the way I'm looking at it, we can get everything done in these top four tiers. I don't think he's so bad he deserves to be, like, a whole tier lower. You get him so late, and his damage is so bad. Like, Spiny Toss does five. Spiny Surge does four. You, you just can't be doing that late game.
Like, the reason Close Call is good for evasion is because it can save you when you least expect it. You have to plan Cloud 9. You have to use it. I, so I don't think it's good to be relying on the evasion at high level play. It's just... It's just not ideal. Yeah, that's... I think you're 100% right, Chugga. Like, Spiny... Spiny Surge? It's good for clearing out tough puffs, that's about it. So... I think Lackluster is a full tier below the rest. I think Goombario is next. But he is a tier above still. And uh, in my notes, I put that Goombario was the worst, but not really. So... <laughs> Yo, Rice, thank you for the Prime sub. Thank you for the resub. Yeah, I actually did post some tier lists on Twitter, but I decided to kind of revisit them and do it in sort of a video stream format, so yeah. Okay, so Gumbario. Headbonk is tied with Smack for the best base damage move that does 0 FP. And it can flip shelled enemies, which is pretty good. Headbonk does 3 plus 3, so 6 damage. As opposed to most do 5. Charge and Multibonk is his other strength. It can do heavy damage to a single target. Um... I think the pros kind of stop there, although I will say Charge and Multibonk is a pretty big pro. So here's here's some of the drawbacks at Goombario. I think Tattle's only useful for learning the game, and saving you the trouble of mental math. Same as Peekaboo. Um, and his best strategy does take a bit of setup, like, uh, the Charge will take a couple turns, Mario does everything he does here, but better, like S-Jump Charge, Power Bounce is better than charge multibonk. And also you can't really use multibonk more than once in a single fight, so you should be using the charge multibonk strat. Multibonk is glitched when you use it more than once in the same battle. They didn't reset a value uh, after using multibonk the first time, and that value is the value that refers to when you get capped. So when you use multibonk and you get capped, you're gonna get capped again within like two jumps, the next one. I think you also get one capped eventually. So uh, yeah, multibonk is just not ideal. If multibonk wasn't glitched, would he be A tier? No, I don't think, I don't think Kumbario has enough strengths to really warrant much of a different placement, but that's just yet another reason why multibonk is not as good as it could be. Um, another thing about Gumbario is I said he has no defensive options, no spread damage options, no options against spiked, fiery, or ceiling enemies, and cannot deal with defensive enemies without setup. But his damage is good. So he's got, I think, more strengths than the Lack of Lester, but also more drawbacks. Goombario is a good reason to use group focus. <laughs> okay. Next up is Pink Cooper. So Pink Cooper hits everything hard unless they are immune to explosions. And is your partner's best spread damage option until Ultra Rank comes into play. I say Bombette is Pink Cooper because Cooper pretty much does everything Bombette does, but a little bit cheaper and a little bit more versatile. So that's why Bombette is Pink Cooper in my notes. Her name is Bowler. <laughs> so yeah, um, Power Power Bomb just hits everything hard. It's it's a good move, but it's a lot of FP. 
And uh, that was one of my biggest drawbacks for Bombette is that that partner just drains your FP. Like, Body Slam and Bomb are also just ground-based versions of Skydive and Shell Shot, so not that good. She's also, I guess, pink Paracarry in a way. And you also can't really use Bombette defensively. Like, you gotta pay up an FP if you want to hit anything aerial with Mega Bomb. But, I will say Mega Bomb can hit everything everywhere. It's a slightly more expensive, but slightly higher damage air raid. So if you can afford it, the damage might be worth using her, but... Still, as far as partners go, she is... Below average. In combat. In design, I think Bombette's pretty cool. Okay, next up is Zoomer, which is, hold on, where did I have Paracarry? Yeah, I think Paracarry's up here. This is Zoomer, because Air Raid, he zooms around, so that's his nickname. So Paracarry, uh, he can use Skydive to hit ceiling enemies and anything Mario's Jump can hit, which is probably a plus because Mario's Jump can hit most things. And Shell Shot can hit anything in the game, and for 7 base damage when ultra ranked. Pretty good. Uh, also, Air Raid is the best bang for your buck when it comes to spread damage that hits everything, I think. Outside of Tidal Wave, maybe. If you're good at Tidal Wave, ignore that point, but otherwise Air Raid's pretty good. Airlift is going to be useless in most situations, though. I don't think that's a very good move. Mario should just kill the enemy instead, or you can use something that affects everything, like Spook. But yeah, I mean, Airlift is pretty rarely used. And also, you can't really use Paracarry defensively. He's kind of just an all-out attacker, or carry that enemy away, which you shouldn't really be using much, I don't think. Yeah, Shell Shot is great. I think that's one of Paracarry's best moves. Okay, next up is Blue Bombette. Blue Bombette has Power Shell, which is a good, cheap spread damage move for ground-based enemies. I like Power Shell, I think it's a pretty good move. Dizzy Shell is a cheap status move that hits all ground-based enemies. I mean, Dizzy Shell is the real reason to use Cooper. Let's be real, like, Dizzy Shell... That, that's game-changing in certain fights. So, if you're against, like, the Anti-Guy Squad, just Dizzy Shell. If you're against a huge group of enemies in Chapter 7 and you're worried you're gonna die, Dizzy Shell. If you're in Chapter 6 and you're against all the moles, try Dizzy Shell. I don't even know if it works on them, but you should try it. I just think Dizzy Shell being an AoE status for 3 FP is so good. It's just a really good move for 3 FP. I'd use it on one enemy. If it was 4 FP? No, I don't think it's 4 FP, is it? Might want to check on that. Because I am doing this from memory. It might be 4, but even if it's 4, that's still better than any other. Okay, so it is 4. 4 FP for Dizzy Shell is still really good. Power Shell's 3, Dizzy- yeah, okay, I got it mixed up. So Dizzy Shell... The other- the other spread damage- or the spread status move is Mega Shock, which is what, 6? 8? I don't even remember. It's five? Mega Shock's only five? Hang on. I mean, that actually makes sense with how I'm ranking these partners, so... I'm getting confused by Master Quest, that's what it is. Okay, so...
Tizzy Shell being 4 doesn't really change my opinion of Cooper. And the other reason for that is Fire Shell. It's basically a meta Power Shell for more FP. And it truly shines against the Ice enemies in Chapter 7 and Dry Bones. So he does Black Alester's spread damage, but better. Just can't hit quite as many enemies. Yeah, I just think Cooper's a better partner than uh, most of these guys. Pretty much, like so many enemies in chapter 6 and 7 are weak to fire for Cooper. Oh, that's nice. Um, I don't know nearly as much about TTYD Durba, but perhaps someday we'll talk about it. What do you guys think so far? Am I like totally out of league putting Cooper this high and Bombette so low or Lackaluster so low or Paracarry up here? Well, Cooper is technically not even that high, he's just average. I, I just don't really know if I can show this with the tier list format, because there's only eight partners, but he's fourth best. Four out of eight. Well, best in TAS is this one. Because Tidal Wave. Okay, next up is probably what? The reason that I put Baby Sun in S tier is Electro Dash, which pierces defense and can be used on aerial, ceiling, ground, and spiked enemies, which I believe makes it the best base partner move in the game. Electro Dash is just so good. And Power Shock is genuinely useful against most regular enemies and even some bosses, especially Anti Guy and the Toy Box. The Anti Guy in the Toy Box is more, more vulnerable to Shock than the other Anti Guys in Chapter 8. But yeah, it's actually a good status. And it's 2 FP. Pretty sure. No AoEs is okay if you run like Power Quake and you have Shooting Star or Star Storm with Mario. Also, Turbo Charge gives Mario a straight up damage boost for up to four turns and is most useful when spamming Jump or Power Bouncing. Every Power Bounce that you get is an extra damage from Watt using Turbo Charge. It's pretty solid. And Mega Shock hits any enemy on the screen. Apparently for 5 FP, that's pretty nice. So as long as they're vulnerable to Shock, you have a good chance of getting one. Pierce defense and stun and hit pretty much anything. And boost Mario's attack. Watt is a very good partner. What I will say about Watt negatively though, two shock moves is a bit limiting, because one of those could have been a better move. Like you have power shock and mega shock, I feel like that's kind of overkill. I could just take one or the other and have something entirely new. Also a little bit of limited offensive potential, which I think we kind of talked about with no spread damage option and no big damage. like. The piercing is nice, but no big damage. And Watt also struggles against fiery enemies. Not that common, but worth pointing out, I think. Okay, next up is Sushi, which is the best bomb bet. 
So the best bo best bomb bet, excuse me, the best bomb bet can use belly flop to hit anything Mario's normal jump can hit, which is most things. Can also use squirt to hit anything, ceiling, fiery spiked, you name it, for good damage. It's also a water type move, which is a somewhat common weakness as far as elemental weaknesses go in this game, because they're not that common, but water's a good one to have. And it's basically shell shot, if you think about it. It's just a better shell shot. Uh, and pretty much Tidal Wave is just a better air raid. Especially if it's 6 FP. That's the same cost. You can get up to 14 damage with Tidal Wave. But yeah, Water Block also is great utility. It increases Mario's defense by 1 for up to 4 turns, and adds another defense point against fiery moves from the likes of Lava Prana and Bowser, which is situationally useful. Tidal Wave can one-hit KO pretty much anything and the game except Dupla Ghosts and bosses. Problem is, you need to be tasked to do that consistently. <laughs> yeah, Max Tidal Wave is just extremely hard to pull off in a task setting, and will eat away your FP. She is a well-rounded partner, but that's actually both good and bad. It's good because Sushi is good for pretty much anything. It's bad though because this is a turn-based RPG you can prepare for pretty much any situation. So she doesn't specialize in anything specifically except for maybe Tidal Wave spread damage. Uh, somewhat hard to plan strategies around outside of killing fire enemies. Alright, here's why I think Bow is the best in the game. Ultra Ranked Smack hits for 6 damage against enemies with no defense. And defense is not that common in Paper Mario 64, you'd be surprised. It ties it with Gumbario's Headbonk as the hardest hitting base move for 0 FP. Also, Out of Sight is amazingly versatile and cheap. It can be used in a pinch or as part of an overall strategy. We know how strong Mega Rush is and Power Bounce and all that stuff. So why not just use Out of Sight to avoid damage? You don't even need life rooms with Bow. You can usually set it up in a way where you uh, don't need a live stream. Out of Sight is really why Bo is number one. It's just so good, and it's only 2 FP. It's so much better than any other partner move, in my opinion. You just, you become invincible for a turn. Yes, it takes away Bo's next turn, but it was so strong in 64, they actually changed it in TTYD, where it takes both Mario and Vivian's next turn. So it got kind of balanced in that game, but out of sight is so good. You get to you get to attack with Mario, the turn after you use out of sight. Um, Fan smack is the hardest hitting single target move any partners have for six FP. The exception being tidal wave if you can max it out, but a ten damage move for wait is it five or six? It might be five FP. Yeah, so that's how, like, Veil makes sense in T2ID, because it was balanced around it, around the fact that they wanted you to use it for avoiding massive attacks, rather than just use it every other turn, like you can in this. It's just so good, like... Enter a fight in peril. You can kill anything. And if you don't, for whatever reason, you can out of sight, and then kill them next turn. <laughs> um... Also... You can hit anything in the game without defense between Smack and Fan Smack. Like, Fan Smack can hit Flaming Lava Piranha or Electric Huff, Huff and Puff. So... That's actually more versatile than Watt, I'm pretty sure. Because Watt can't hit Huff and Puff. Huff and Puff is immune to the electric. 
The problem is the defense, which hopefully you will take care of using Mario if you're going to be using Bo. But I think overall she is the best. Ghost Waifu is number one. Yeah, Watt also gets hurt by fire. If defense, use Watt. If no defense, use Bo. And if you just want to kill everything with Tidal Wave, use Sushi. I think that's a good S tier. Yeah, I feel like in Tass, Tidal Wave's power puts Sushi ahead of Bo. But in RTA, or, you know, just real time, not necessarily for speedrunning, just in real time. For humans, I would say this is a pretty good tier list. No, I don't think we get Sushi in Tass. But if you were capable of max damage tidal waves, it makes her the best potential partner. This is only in battle ranks. Yeah. So like outside of battle, you'd be ranking them either based on personality or glitch potential. And if it's glitch potential, this list would probably look something like this. Probably something like that. I don't know. Maybe even like this. I don't know if anyone can compare to Lackluster yet. Lackluster's so glitchy, I love him for that. <laughs> Flying Bombet and Blue Bombet, yeah. So that's Flying Bombet. That is the best Bombet. That's Blue Bombet. Oh wait, no, this is Cloud Bombet. This is Flying Bombet. This is Bombet. This is Smart Bombet. This is Dead Bombet. And this is Baby Bombet. Chugga, don't give them ideas. <laughs> like just post this list on Twitter. Strider said Lackalester is the best partner in the game. And that Watt and Bo are the worst. Okay. Last tier list we're doing today. This one will be kind of quick, because this is personal opinion. But there's also the ranking the chapters. So, uh, this is like... Anyone can make this list. Do you guys want the link? Yeah, okay, I'll put the link in chat. Because this is definitely personal opinion kind of stuff. I mean, even even the badges and the partners to some degree are personal opinion, where you want to put them. But I think most people can agree, like Bo, Watt, Sushi are pretty good. Gumbario, Lackaluster, Paracarry, Bombet, you know, kind of not as good when it comes to battle potential, at least in high level play. Casually, you can use anything and make it work. So this isn't supposed to be like delegitimizing anyone's opinions. But yeah, okay. Let's take a look at the chapters. So this one's chapter one. Maybe we should start with the top, because I didn't really plan this one out. I think chapter seven is the best chapter. Actual S tier chapter, like near perfection, if not perfection. It's just the perfect atmosphere. It's got a good difficulty, I think. Um, the music is always on point. I mean, Crystal King, Crystal Palace, Shiver Mountain, Shiver Snowfield. 
It's all so good. You have the meme boss Monstar. You got you got a Junior Trooper rematch. rematch. Um, I think the uh, the puzzles in Crystal Palace are a lot of fun. The design of the characters, like Crystal King, is really cool. This is just an all-around great chapter, and I think it's top tier. In fact, I think it's so good it might belong in S tier by itself. Like, I would, I'd be willing to put Chapter Seven on a pedestal. Okay. Next up, I think, is Chapter 3. I think Chapter 3's story is a lot of fun, with the whole Invincible Tubba Blubba thing. You've also got Bo, and you've got all the booze, and, like, Stanley. I think the characters are funny. I think the booze have some of the best dialogue in the game. It's just a very well-written chapter, and... I love the dynamic between going through a spooky forest, then you got Gusty Gulch and Boo's Mansion, and even Top of Love's Castle. It's just a good dynamic that all flows together really well, but still makes each part of the chapter feel like its own little section. Forever Forest is its own section, Boo's Mansion is its own section, Gusty Gulch is its own section, and Top of Love's Castle is its own section. Castle isn't too long, which is good, because it's a little bit bland compared to the other areas. And the chase sequence back to Windy Mill is a lot of fun. The only thing is... I wish that the chase music persisted during fights. I think that would have been a nice touch. And, um... I don't know, I think that's about it. The boss fight's fun. And the music for the fight is really good. G-Man, thank you for the bits. Ooze Mansion is too fun, like, you take a break from all the fights, and you just do their silly puzzles, and... Yeah, it's just, it's a really good, it's a really good little section. I just think Chapter 3 is A tier. Okay, next up is... I think Dry Dry Desert, still A tier. I think chapter 2 is exactly what I want out of an early game chapter. It is right when the game starts picking up, I think. Like, you start getting some better badges like Quake Hammer and Damage Dodge. You have enough partners to start being able to have a lot more options. Mario's getting to a high enough level where the game and, the, like, the fights are just getting better. And, um, you have Wacka. Wacka's pretty good. That's a good character. So yeah, on top of Wacka though, you got Paracarry and the like letter sequence going around Mount Rugged. I think that's a really good, um, I think that's just a really good way to explore the area. Like they could have made Mount Rugged, you just walk through it and there's enemies, but no, like they made you just explore each section to look for the letters for Paracarry. I think that worked out really well because it's not too long. And, um... After that, you have the optional fight with Buzzer. I think optional bosses are a really cool touch, and it's something I wish TTYD did a little bit more. There are a bunch of optional bosses in Paper Mario 64. Um, I don't think that's the case for the sequel. But, like, Buzzer's pretty cool. And then you get to the desert. Now, the desert is really cool because there's certain rooms with a ton of meaning, and then there's some rooms with pretty much no meaning. And it really just... When I was a kid, especially, it just, like, fed my exploration fantasies. Like, you just run through, you can go check out every room in the desert, or you can just take the road to Dry Dry Outpost. You have the option to go and explore everything, and you're rewarded with a couple badges, or more star points, or more really useful items, like Life Shrooms and Ultra Shrooms. Like, those are really good items for Chapter 2. If you go out of your way to get them, then you're rewarded. And also the Super Block and the Oasis. And another great touch, in my opinion, is once you get to Dry Dry Outpost, you can skip the section where you give Mousetafa a lemon. Like the Information Trader section. You can just buy the Dry Shroom and the Dusty Hammer, and you can skip that section if you already know about it. I, I, always, like when, I always like when games don't punish you for knowing what you're doing. 
because that's not necessarily a section that has a ton of meaning meaning when you want to like play through the game a second time it's just backtracking you can eliminate backtracking in future playthroughs i think that's nice then um you go through the desert looking for the dry dry ruins and dry dry ruins is a really good dungeon it's not too long and uh i just think it's great atmosphere i like all the chomps it's a really good chapter i think chapter two is a tier All right, next up is chapter four. So chapter four, I think people are, they struggle with this chapter a little bit because there is a bit of backtracking. However, they did another good when it comes to Green Station. In Green Station, there's the uh, yellow, green, red, blue blocks. You can skip that section of backtracking if you know the combo. And that's really nice. Like, chapter 4 is fairly backtracky, and you will have to do a little bit of backtracking, even in your second or third playthrough, or even your tenth playthrough. But, you will do less if you know what you're doing. Like, that block puzzle. Uh, there's also... Well, I just think it's a fun chapter. Like, you have Anti-Guy, Anti-Guy's a great character. You have all the Shy Guys carrying items, like Cake Mix and the Calculator. Um, and you can fight them if you want the items. There's also the slot machines, and you get to choose, like, what's guarding the chests. If you want more challenge or more star points, you choose the tough enemies. If you want it to be silly, choose a Thunder Rage to guard the treasure chest. Like, also Lantern Ghost, Watt, and General Guy. Just Red Station in general is so good. I think it's a lot of fun. Okay, next up, I don't even know if we're done with the A tier, guys, like, the more I play this game, the more I realize all the chapters are really good. <laughs> I think here's where I'll put chapter 5. So, you know, like, I think, I think if you asked me even a year ago, or maybe even a few months ago, I would have put like this, and maybe, maybe it would look like this. I think... It's starting to look more like this. Like, everything is so good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so chapter 5. I always looked forward to this chapter as a kid. It was my absolute favorite, because I loved the Lava Prana. I just thought it was so cool. But, I, at first, like, not at first. After I played the game quite a few times, I started to kind of dread Jade Jungle, because I was like, man, this, this part's kind of long. But as I've play the game more and know exactly where I have to go for the jungle, I look forward to it and I think it's a really good section with a lot of enemies. It actually does feel dangerous, like saving the Yoshis matters kind of thing. You got Raphael the Raven, that's right. You get the Ultra Stone, so I think that's good for ultra ranking stuff. Also the backtracking is not bad in this chapter, like the Jade Raven section. I, that's you can easily forgive them for that for the you can easily forgive them for that like it's not that much backtracking um I think once you get to the volcano it, the rooms start looking a little bit the same other than that though it's a really nice atmosphere because there's nothing else quite like the volcano maybe aside from the basement of Bowser's castle. Yeah, this is in TTYD. <laughs> this song. Alright, next up. I think here is where I draw the line between A tier and B tier. I think Chapter 8 is a little less good than the rest of these. Uh, so... Chapter 8, we got a, a, like a really interesting dungeon. So, the thing about Bowser's Castle is 
It's all the dungeon, and for that reason, it's a little bit stale in some parts. But, yeah, like, it's a bit of a marathon. But Star Haven, we have to include that in Chapter 8. Star Haven is such a good zone. It's- I know you're not there for very long, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Like, what other Nintendo 64 map looks that good? Star Haven is so awesome. It's just- yeah, you guys are saying, it's beautiful. It's just a great zone. And it, it starts to feel kind of epic. Like, when you're going to Bowser's Castle on the ship, I just think that's a really, really good section, and it starts building up. But that's the reason Chapter 8's so good, is not the the long, drawn-out dungeon, especially, like, the basement. It's a little bit eh. It's the build-up. Like, you start climbing the stairs, and the music starts getting more and more tense. And the boss fights at the end are so good. Like, Junior Troopa. You beat Junior Troopa, your, your arch-rival for the whole game. Then you walk out the next room, and it's so quiet. There's no music. The courtyard of the castle is just empty. And then you walk into Peach's castle, and it's like that really eerie, slowed-down version of the Bowser theme. Like, the atmosphere that they create leading up to the final battle is why Chapter 8 is so good. But I, the reason I don't think it's A tier is it's kind of drawn out. Like, it's a little long, the basement is eh, but, I mean, Chapter 8's still so good. Alright, next up is Chapter 6. Chapter 6 was one of those chapters that grew on me. I don't think it's bad. I really don't think Chapter 6 is bad. It's just kind of fetch questy. A little bit backtracking. And the main issue is they stick you in that hub room where there's... Up left, left, down left, down right, right, and then up right. It's like, where do I go? When you know where to go, it's fun. When you don't know where to go, I can definitely see why people say this is their least favorite chapter. And, but if you know where to go, I think it's charming in its own right. It's different. I don't think it's good different, like hence why it's the lowest of these chapters so far. But it's a nice change of pace and... Like, once you're back on track to Chapter 7, it just feels super good. Huff and Puff is a really, really good fight. I think that's one of the best mechanical fights in the game. Sun Tower is cool. Uh, Lackluster is such a dork in that chapter. Cloudy Climb is good. I kind of wish Cloudy Climb was expanded on and there was less you had to do in the actual fields. But I still think it's B tier. It's a very pretty chapter, yeah. The thing that actually kept it from being as pretty as it could have been is the fact that you don't get the sun out until the end of it. Because the whole zone just looks so much more vibrant and full of life with the sun out. Of course, that's kind of your whole goal. Is That's why you're there. you got to help with the, the clouds. But, it, in a way, it makes the chapter feel more gloomy than it should have been. For too long of it. But yeah. I think Chapter 6 is still B tier. Alright, next up is Chapter 1. Chapter 1 has some of the best characters in the form of the Koopa Bros. The Koopa Bros are just an absolute highlight of Chapter 1, and I think the Koopa Village pit stop is fun, and Pleasant Path is just a really good, like, generic Mario area. Like, it's... It's a really solid, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. It's a really solid entry to the game. However, chapter one suffers from the slow starting, the slow starting RPG effect. You don't have a ton of options in battle, in battles, and it's like, it's, it just takes its time a little bit with the fights, and it just throws a bunch of fights at you. I feel like chapter one and prologue could have been made better if the leveling was faster paced early game. So less fights, but more star points. I feel like the whole fuzzy bit totally didn't need to exist. Yeah, although I did like having a reason to go to Koopa Village. That whole thing was kind of odd in how it was executed. Like, it could have totally worked if Cooper was... Maybe Cooper, who is an aspiring archaeologist, like, 
lost some really important relic that uh, he got from Colorado when he was outside in his backyard, and then you have to go fight enemies for it or something. Like, they could have made that work out differently. And just, like, the fuzzies came in and stole all their shells. We don't know why. <laughs> but, you know, I, I can't complain. That's kind of nitpicking. I will say this. I think Cooper's personality should have been expanded on more than just the, like, one cutscene he was in. That kind of goes for any partner in 64, though. Koopa Bros are super cool, and Koopa Bros Fortress is alright. It's a little slow, but it's alright. Yeah, something like that. Like, the Fuzzies in league with the Koopa Bros would have made sense. Okay. Lastly, I think this is a whole tier below, is Prologue. Prologue does something really important, and it sets the stage of the game, of course, and Paper Mario, I think we all know that it's a very charming game. So there's something about Prologue that is nice, but also, it's it suffers from the downside that Chapter 1 has even more. It is too slow, and it's a straight line, pretty much. There's too many battles, and you can't do a whole lot with them, and no action command. It makes the fights just kind of drag on. A lot of cutscenes. I, I know we can't complain too much about cutscenes, because, like, they are trying to establish what you're supposed to do, and why you're doing it, and what's at stake, and who are the Koopa Bros. But, uh, yeah, like, Goomba King's good. Goomba King's good in prolong. Like, keep in mind, this is C tier, and if, you know, I would say C is average, but it's just... It's average in a great game. That's the issue with Prologue. So that's that's my personal opinion when it comes to the Paper Mario chapters and why, but yeah. Refund is missing. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, what'd you guys think of the stream? Just kind of a change of pace, but uh, we we ranked every every battle badge. I shouldn't have said every badge. Um, and we ranked all the partners, and we ranked the chapters. By the way, all these tier lists are on tier maker. So, if you guys want to make your own partner to your list, there is this one. And if you want to make the badge to your list, there is this one. Alright, so let's find someone to raid. Go ahead and turn that off. What are we going to raid with? Refund best badge? Okay. So... Pants is doing a Super Mario Odyssey All Moons speedrun? Or something like that. That's judging by the title. So I say we go raid Pants. And we will have the message as refund the best badge. We'll do that. So that's gonna be our our raid message. And we'll go ahead and start this up. Pants raid. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Take it easy guys and have a good night.